Welcome back to Emotional Mojo. So Valentine's Day is almost here and love is in the air. And you know, it's all cute and fun for the little ones with the Valentines and candy. But it can get a lot more uncomfortable for parents as older kids navigate the dating world. So how can parents keep kids on the right track without getting completely all up in their business, right? <laughs> There's a fine line there. So joining us with the answer is physician, parenting expert, and author, Dr. Debbie Gilboa, a.k.a. Dr. G. Dr. G, welcome. Thanks so much for having me. This is a great topic because it can get kind of awkward, right? So let's start with that age-old question. When is it okay to officially let our kids start dating? This is a really good question, and I think parents talk about this from the moment you place a baby, maybe even, maybe especially a daughter, yeah. in a dad's arms. They do. That's, <laughs> That's like right? the big thing. That's yeah. the second it begins. And the question is, do you remember all the different definitions that we had for dating or going out or boyfriend and girlfriend? Uh -huh. yeah. Going starts, steady. Starts in kindergarten, right? You have mm -hmm. little kids. Have they I ever do. come home and said, I have a boyfriend or somebody oh, yeah. said like I'm three their years girlfriend? old. Yeah. Right. Ava's my girlfriend. Yeah. Right. And, and so the question for parents is not how old is it okay, it's what does that mean, sweetie? So That's a really good point. Once we get a mm -hmm. definition from our kids about what dating means, which often in older elementary and middle school can mean talking about the relationship to my friends, but never actually looking that person in the eye or talking to them. <laughs> it's or like you check the off. boss for yes and never right. talk again. Right. Right. Yeah. the little Chinese fortune teller <laughs> things we used yes. to make, right? Yes. And it's yep. be like, oh, that's my boyfriend now. Yeah. Oh, really? What's his last name? No idea. Well, I wouldn't say that's still a problem, by the way, for adults, yeah. but that's a whole other thing. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely can be the case. Well, should the rules be different, though, for girls and for boys when we're talking about teenage years and actual dating? Because there is a, a stigma there for how girls are treated, I think, and how mm -hmm. teenage boys are treated. I think the really important thing for parents to keep in mind is that we cannot tell our kids how to feel, but okay. we can guide what they do. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if one of my sons, and I have four of them, comes home and tells oh. me about somebody he likes or he loves or any of those things, I'm not going to get anywhere if I say, oh, no, you don't. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? So You're how do you handle it her. then? Guide behavior. Say, what does that mean? But okay. also ask, what do you do together? How do you treat that person? Yeah. It's, it's not actually terrible for our kids to be starting to dip a toe in this water at an age where they still listen to us yeah. about some of their behaviors. Because now maybe I get a little chance to guide my child in what does it mean to treat a Take woman respectfully? Take advantage of it while you can, exactly. while they will listen to you. Right, where now, we can actually engage them. So we're in like the technology age now. So kids are, instead of the check the box, I mean, we're texting yeah. and Facebook friending yes. and you know messaging and all that kind of stuff. I mean, you could tweet someone and ask them out. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with that? Right, you could have actually age? never seen them. Right. 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 My friend said, I should think you're cute. Do you want to be my boyfriend, girlfriend, But there's that joke about parents, whether they should be friends with their kids on Facebook. Mm -hmm. I mean, how much privacy do we let our children have? They are growing up. They're teenagers. They need a right. little bit of autonomy. But So, absolutely. But I think it's really important to keep the distinction. Kids think privacy is a right. Parents know privacy is earned. Okay. Ah. So having your high schoolers password for their phone is appropriate. How okay. much you use it is in sometimes less important than them knowing that you're a part of their world. And then you have to be really specific. You guys do a fantastic job of telling parents, write things down. Yeah. And I always mm -hmm. encourage parents to write down, okay, I get that you want this privilege of me not, never reading your texts or not checking your phone. Here are the things you need to do and how long you need to do them to earn that privilege. Got it. Here are the things that would break that privilege, would revoke that privilege. Nice. When we're very clear with our kids, we show them respect. Yeah. I know this is your goal. I want that goal for you too. I do not want to be reading your texts when you're 18 yeah. years old. <laughs> uh, when you're paying your own cell phone bill, that'll be perfect. Yeah. But I do need to know that you know how to treat people respectfully, that you require other people treat you respectfully, and that you are using technology as a force for good. Because you right. can't keep them in the dark from technology. No, I mean, no, you just can't no. do it. No, unless today. you're going to be Amish. You're yeah. going to be technology. And I gotta say, if I world. knew my parents had the password to my phone, that mm -hmm. might be enough for me to it's just. It's like uh, if you have a security system in your home, they say that the most valuable piece of that is the sign in your yard. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We've been talking a lot today about just um, being able to communicate to somebody, you know, logically, like taking the emotion out so that they're not defensive. And I think this would be the same with kids, is if you start kind of threatening how they feel, they get defensive. But if sure. you make it about behavior, it becomes very logical. And so then it's, it's just, earned. Yeah. It is. I think okay, that's important. what if your point. kid is dating somebody who's just bad news? Do you give your opinion of who they're dating? 
to um, your kid? Do you tell them this If you're guy? desperate to drive them closer together, absolutely. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> but what do you do? You can't just sit back and do nothing. Because, so you focus on behavior. I really respect how your girlfriend says hello to me when she calls before she talks to you. Okay, that's a really dated answer. Nobody has a house phone. Sorry. I really like <laughs> I how your girlfriend talks to me when she comes over yeah. before you guys go hang out and do your homework in the dining room. Mm -hmm. Or I very much appreciate that your boyfriend showed up to your soccer match. That was great. Came out and supported you and watched that. Yeah, the focus or, on the positive. Right. Yeah. But you focus on the behavior. Yeah. Um, it disturbs me that the words mm -hmm. I hear your boyfriend using when he talks to you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're focusing on behavior, not but not that. Not terrible. he's a loser. Because Break up if, with him. if that, <laughs> you know, that huge piercing, then you just don't understand, and you close yeah. the door, and suddenly she or he can't listen to you. So you've got this series, this parenting series here. They're and tiny. you've got, they're, they're great. They're like pamphlets. Okay. I can handle this. This they is teach respect, yes. <laughs> teach responsibility, and teach resilience. Is this something just the parents read, or do they read this with the kids? So this isn't a philosophy book. Inside each book are 50 activities oh. that parents and kids can do together from ages Great. 2 to 17 to build that character Love trait it. in really positive ways. Yeah. So I, a lot of parents tell me that they started off reading it, but when they would say to their kids, oh, we're going to do this thing, they would get this you know, kind of backlash, like, oh character lesson. <laughs> so they would say, hey, I got this book. Look through your age section, and you pick one that we should do together. Uh, then you can throw me under the bus. Mm -hmm. This doctor that I saw, or you know, or this this parenting expert that I listened to suggested we try this. I wonder what you know how it would go. Yeah. Probably this is probably this is too hard. You might not be able to do this. Very oh my cool. gosh. <laughs> Love it. Awesome. And quickly, the inevitable breakup, because it's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. it does. What is the thing you should not do or say when the breakup happens? Because your kid's in a very rough place at this time. You want to show empathy. There's okay. no I told you so in a breakup. No. Okay. Partially because that breakup may be over to tomorrow. So if you malign this kid, even though you're just taking your child's side, yeah. they then see it as if they get back together, they can't tell you or they can't talk Got to it. you and now you hate them. So okay. focus again on behavior and emotion. Amazing. I am so sorry you're sad. I am frustrated you were treated that way. That was disrespectful. You didn't deserve that. I'm focused on you, my darling child. Thank you so much. <laughs> if you guys want more info, head to askdrg.com and you can get that. You want to play yes, no with us? That would be great. All right, Thank we got you. time for one fun question here. Check this out. A realistic looking statue of a man sleepwalking in his underwear near the center of Wesley uh, College has created a stir among the women on campus. This is an all women campus, by the way. More than 100 students there have signed a petition asking administrators to remove this statue. It's called the Sleepwalker, it's part of an art exhibit. What do you guys think? Some say it's just art, you guys. Others say this is scary and it makes us think of sexual assault. It's scaring girls all over campus. Should they remove this statue? Oh, is it there temporarily? Uh, I'm on the fence. <laughs> I'll say yes if it's actually scaring people. But in general, I mean. I'll say a no because sometimes art is scary and sometimes it is calming and reassuring or beautiful and inspiring, but it's causing great conversations. Yeah, that's this whole true. campus of women are talking about what's important to them and how they react to things and how they feel about men they don't know. Yeah, I, I think it's great. I think the conversation is really good, but I also still think it does trigger things for people who have had bad experiences. So, it's true, it can know, We have to be trying to be protective, and this is a place where people should feel safe. It on looks campus. so real. It does. It's down to the like, really saggy, does. tidy <laughs> white. Yes. Right? Look at that. If which, I saw that, I'm which, sorry. How can, I'm how can that be intimidating? I'm sorry. That's just sad. I don't think it's, don't think it's, it's intimidating. I just think it's weird. It's just it's sad. Oh my gosh. Thank you again so much, Dr. Thank G. You That's not going me. anywhere. Coming up, we're going to share the four things you can do today to let go and forgive someone who has done you wrong. You're watching Emotional Mojo. We'll be right back.